revive your church, Holy Spirit, let your fire burn, Holy Spirit, sweep all your church to reflect the beauty of God. Oh, Holy Dearly beloved, praise the Lord. I'm pleased on behalf of the Executive Council of the Church of Pentecost to deliver the state of the church address as of December 2019. The General Secretary, Apostle Alexander Nanaya Kumilabi, the International Missions Director, Apostle Emmanuel Jesse Ado, Members of the Executive Council of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Professor Pokunina, our immediate past chairman, Apostle Michael Kwabna Intumi, our past chairman, Apostles, Prophets, Evangelists, National and Area Heads, Ministry Directors, and Ministry Executive Committee Members, Ministers of the Church of Pentecost, Chairpersons of committees and boards, elders, representatives, retired ministers of the Church of Pentecost, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Executive Council, I warmly welcome all councillors to the opening session of the 44th session of the General Council meetings of the Church of Pentecost. This year's council meetings will go down in history as the first ever virtual council meeting of the church. Though we would have wished to have fellowship among ourselves as we usually do, the COVID-19 pandemic has necessitated these meetings be held virtually, owing to the restrictions imposed on mass gathering and the closure of nation's borders. As I indicated earlier in my Easter circular, the maker of the universe is our God, and nothing surprises him. I'm convinced that he is in control of everything, and he knows how to keep and preserve his church in moments such as these. At the end, the Lord will gain glory for his great name, and his church will come out stronger. On this note, I extend a hearty welcome to you and pray for a fruitful meeting. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may I take this opportunity to first of all express my deepest appreciation to God for how far he has brought this church. We can testify of his awesome grace upon the church since its inception up to now. I again acknowledge his grace upon the church in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. May his name be praised now and forevermore. My heartfelt gratitude and appreciation also goes to the Executive Council members for their continuous commitment and support to the church, especially during the period under review. I would like to specially extend my gratitude to Apostle Alexander Nanaya Kumilabi, the General Secretary, and Apostle Emmanuel Jesiado, the International Missions Director, for their selflessness and hard work in pursuing the agenda of the church in their respective positions. I also acknowledge with gratitude Apostle David Tekpe for deputizing for the chairman or, and the general secretary when we were on official duties outside the country. Area and national heads, missionaries, directors of ministries, and ministers on secondment to the head of his parachurch organizations and the security service are also highly appreciated for their continu 
contribution to the possessing the nation's agenda of the church in their respective lines of duty. I would like to express my appreciation to all ministers, chairmen, and members of boards and committees for their sacrifices and love towards the work of the Lord. I pray that their labor of love will not be in vain. Our hard-working management and staff of the headquarters in the various administrative areas of the church are also highly appreciated. We acknowledge their commitment to duty. May the Lord continue to bless them all. The commitment of officers and the entire members of the church cannot be underestimated. They are highly commended for their hard work, love, and support to the church of God. The possessing the nation's agenda will not be on course commendably without them. May the Lord of the church bless them and continue to be with them in all their endeavors. Dearly beloved, the year 2019, like all the past years, witnessed massive support by many members of the church in various ways. Aside the many individuals who fasted and prayed for the church incessantly, some supported financially, others put up church buildings, bought parcels of land, and donated vehicles, evangelism equipment to the church. In the main report, there is a detailed information of individuals, districts, areas, and nations who supported some sectors of the church. For the purpose of this address, I would like to mention and acknowledge a few of them. Elder Dr. Joseph Sienwe Japon, CEO of Jospon Group of Companies. Elder Dr. Nana Samuel Amotobe, CEO of Tobinko Group of Companies. Elder Prince Amwa of Kwadasu Area. Elder Nana K. Jesse of Swami Area. Elder Samuel Fridia Ajiman of Teshi Area, Teshi Nungwa Area. Mrs. Eunice Asumahini of Teshi Nungwa area, and Elder Patrick Danso of Kaneshi area, continue to support the church in the payment of their tithes and other financial commitment, including putting up church buildings, mission houses, and purchasing of vehicles. God bless you all. The church in the USA donated 140,000 US dollars to support the construction of the Ajira holding facility prison holding facility. Apostle Emmanuel and Mrs. Christiana Apia retired, donated to 12 plots of land to Kwame Danso District for church projects. They also fully financed the construction of a thousand-seater church auditorium for the Central Assembly in the Kwame Danso District at the cost of 800,000 Ghana CDs. The late elder lawyer M.Z. Glover built and donated a well-furnished 250-seater church building for Mauli Assembly in the Sogakope area at the cost of over 500,000 Ghanaian cities. He also built two children's ministry halls, offices, and a baptistry. The facility is sitting on a compound of about three plots of land. He concreted and wore the entire compound. He also donated 200 bags of cement to support the construction of the Sogakope Area Mission House. May God bless the precious soul of our departed brother. Apostle Michael Ajima Amwaku, the national head of Church of Pentecost USA, constructed a 500-seater church auditorium with attached offices, two children ministry halls, and washrooms for the Tripoli district in Tema area. He also donated 50 chairs to the district and a set of drums to the Bethel Assembly in the district. John Ajekum of North Taifa District in the Achimota area donated an amount of 324 thousand and eighty seven cities ten pesos to support the North Taifa Central Church building. Elder Gabriel Amiel 
of North, North Taifa District, Achimota area, donated an amount of 290,371 CD 67 pesos to support the Taifa North English Assembly Building Project. Elder Ding, Ding Dong Chalian donated 50,000 Ghanaian cities to support the construction of a central church building project at Nakpanduri district in the Waliwali area. Brother Joseph Apia of Bata district, Equatoria, Guinea, donated a 24-seater Iveco bus to the district. Apostle Patrick Enin retired made a cash donation of 200000 to the Church of Pentecost Chairman Education Fund, COSEF. Elder and Dickness and Kibosiaku of Nungwa District donated sound system to the tune of 210000 to Agnes Bwahima Temple in Teshi Nungwa area. Mr. Yao Amponsa Mafu and family of Sepe Bokrom District New Tafu area made a cash donation of 200,000 to the Sepe Central Assembly for the purchase of musical instruments and projection for evangel projectors for evangelism. PRWC Graceland made donation to some nations, areas, districts, and institutions to the tune of 436,913. Point sixty pesos and nine CDs. Teshinungwa area supported some nations, areas, and districts to the tune of two hundred and twenty-one thousand two hundred and forty Ghanaian CDs. On behalf of the Executive Council and the entire church, I express our profound appreciation to all such individuals who, in diverse ways, gave to support the church. May the Lord continue to be with them in all their endeavors. Now, let me turn to the state of the church address proper as of December 2019. The state of the church address provides a report of our stewardship for the year 2019. It includes highlights of our achievements under the various strategic approaches of the Vision 2023 agenda of possessing the nations, as well as all major development and that took place in the reporting year. General overview. In 2019, brothers and sisters, the church witnessed a number of activities at all levels geared towards the implementation of the Vision 2023 Possessing the Nations agenda. These activities were guided by three strategic approaches of the Vision 2023. These are equipping members of the church with the required resources, strengthening and realigning existing institutions and structures to serve our implementation units and transforming society. It is worth noting that major activities were initiated at all levels of the church on that these approaches and these yielded very positive results. All the new ministry interventions on the Vision 2023, namely home and urban missions, ministry to persons with disabilities, chaplaincy ministry, workers' guild, have helped to enhance the possessing of the nation's agenda of the church. The church also introduced Spencer International in our quest to augment our international missions effort and mobilize young graduates for world impact. On the Sasika front, the church over the period opened 1,169 new assemblies worldwide and created 143 districts. A total of 271,342 souls were won, with 209,607 representing 77.2% baptized in water. The church's overall membership also grew 
by 6.6%, reaching 3,474,241. To God be all the glory. Headquarters administration. As of December ending 2019, there were 424 non-ministerial staff on the of official payroll of the church. This number is made up of 230 employees at the head office and 194 at 230 employees at the area offices, as you say, and 194 at the head office. 12 workers at the headquarters were retired. These gallant men were Peter Kofi Emisa, he served for 32 years. Francis Batez, 30 years. Samuel Wilson, served for 26 years. Isaac Nyaku, served for 25 years. Boatin Ejenim, for 24 years. John Amos Obin, 22 years. Prosper Akadi, 22 years. Samuel Frimpong, Donko, 20 years. George Sapon, 20 years. Nicholas Sapon Kumankuma, 19 years. Emilia Austin, 19 years. John Kwesi Divine Kato, 19 years. We thank them for their service to the church and we wish them well in their retirement. 24 new personnel were employed in the course of the year to replace staff who left the organization through resignations and retirement. This number also included others who were recruited and posted to the newly created area offices. Mr. George Kodria of the Project Development and Estate Department and Mr. Moses Lambon Dangag of Boga area won the Chairman's Award for Head Office and Area Offices respectively. All departments within the administrative setup of the church's headquarters perform creditably well in the period under review. Membership growth analysis. May I at this moment give a brief on the membership growth of the church in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, as of December ending 2019, the Church of Pentecost operated in 105 nations with an overall worldwide total membership of 3,474,241, recording a growth rate of 6.6% over the previous year. The church's total membership in Ghana as of December 2019 was 2,973,820. Thirty. This constituted approximately 9.8% of the total estimated 2019 Ghanaian population of 30,280,482. It also constituted approximately 13.8% of the total Christian population in Ghana, which is estimated to be 71.2% of the Ghanaian population. The youth continue to make up the largest segment of the church's membership, representing 41.2%. The children membership constituted 32.2%, and those above 35 years constituted 26.6%. This implies that 73.4% of the church's membership in Ghana is made up of children and youth. A further improvement over the previous year, which stood at 73%. This continues to give an indication that the Church of Pentecost is largely made of young people, a factor that continues to project a brighter future for the church. It is therefore important for leadership at all levels to continue to give significant attention to nurturing these young people for leadership responsibilities both within and outside the church. They remain a great force in our quest 
to possess the nations for Christ. On the international front, the external branches of the church operating in 104 nations across the world recorded an overall membership of 500,411, witnessing a marginal percentage increase of 0.4%. The low percentage increase is as a result of a membership review exercise carried out by Benin. In 2019, membership in the non-autonomous nations increased by 16,724, bringing to total an overall membership of 320,996. This represents 5.5% increase over the previous year. However, the autonomous nations recorded a decrease of 14,614 in membership in the reporting period, which led to their total membership dropping from 194,029 in 2018 to 179,415 in 2019 a decrease of 7.5%. This has been occasioned by a review of the membership registered by Benin, an exercise which reduced the nation's overall membership by 21,719. That's a lot. That Côte d'Ivoire, on the other hand, gained 7,105 members. Benin is encouraged to put measures in place to avoid the recurrence of this problem. Indigenous membership among the nations. The percentage of indigen indigenous in the international missions keeps growing. To the glory of God, we have 100% indigenous members in Mauritius, Congo Brazzaville, Namibia, Rwanda, Angola, Belize, Kenya, Malaysia, Nepal, Trinidad and Tobago, India, and Malawi. Congo DR, Madagascar, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Ethiopia, Zambia, Bangladesh, Jamaica, Zimbabwe, Uganda, Swaziland, Chad, Botswana, Burundi, Sierra Leone, Lesotho, Central African Republic, Togo, and Kenya also recorded over 90% indigenous members. To God be all the glory. Evangelism and church planting analysis. In 2019, a total membership of 152,476 outreaches were carried out worldwide. This represented an 86.6% increase over that of the previous year, which stood at 81,691 outreaches. Total adult souls won for these outreaches sum up to 271,342. This represents an increase of 7.8% over that of the previous year. Of this number, 67,369 67, came from the Gospel Morning Initiative. To the glory of God, 209,607 of the souls won were baptized in water. This means that 77.2% of all adult souls won in 2019 were baptized in water. And this is an improvement over the 2018, over that of 2018, which stood at 73%, 73 73.6%. The period also witnessed the planting of 1,169 churches, representing a percentage increase of 6.5% over the 2018 figure of 1,098. These souls won, and the churches planted, cumulated in the creation of 143 districts worldwide. Brothers and sisters, the church worldwide, as of December 2019, 
had a total of 22,842 assemblies and 2,524 districts. This is great. We give God all the glory. Uh, our ministries continue to perform creditably. We will look at ministries' performance. Children ministry. The newly introduced community children's club is making significant impact in the lives of the children. A total of 100 clubs have been formed in 109 local assemblies, 95 districts, and 22 areas with a total membership of 1,716. Of this, 511 are non-Church of Pentecost members. The ministry won and retained a total of 52,511 children. 36,998 children were baptized in the Holy Spirit and 111,965 were dedicated to the glory of God. For the youth ministry, Pastor Ebenezer Hagan was appointed youth director in the year to replace Apostle David Nyansa Hefron, who, has served, who served meritoriously for eight solid years. Six Spencer traveling secretaries and four area youth pastors were also appointed to support the work of the youth ministry. All activities undertaken were greeted with great success. These included the business, the business and entrepreneur chamber, the political chamber, which was held at the northern and central southern zones for increased participation and the mega youth watch nice sessions. Others included the Pensa Ghana Conference, School of Apologetics, and the Pentecost Young Missionaries, PYM Outreaches. Pentecost Young Missionaries witnessed 3,658 souls won for the for the law, that is the outreaches they undertook, yielded 3,658 souls. 4,422 converts were baptized in water, 434 were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and five new assemblies were established by the PYM. The women's ministry. The women's ministry under the directorship of Dickness Mrs. Grace Lucy Yevua Isuyama and her executive committee performed creditably over the period. This council meeting marks the end of term of our director who has served creditably for eight solid years. May the Lord bless her for her services to the church. We wish her well in her new endeavors. Activities carried out by the women's ministry included Tuesday prayer meetings, retreats, health talks, fire safety talks, debates and skill training using local materials to equip the women for financial independence. Evangelism by the women's ministry in various areas yielded 33,359 souls through rallies, house to house, personal, market, and lorry station evangelism. The evangelism ministry proper. With the church's vision, 20, with, with the church's vision 2023 of a ratcheting theme possessing the nation, the ministry vigorously embarked on various evangelism strategies nationwide, which resulted in 212,768 decisions made for Christ. Holy Spirit baptism recorded was 130,986. And then 664 new local churches were planted by the evangelism ministry. Seven Sydney vans and a pickup were dedicated to the ministry by a non Church of Pentecost member who preferred to remain anonymous. We are grateful to the Lord of the harvest and all who contributed in diverse ways to support the cause of evangelism in 2019. Pentecost men's ministry. 
under the directorship of Apostle E. Ofe Ankara Bedu, the ministry performed creditably in the reporting, reporting year. Active members increased from 223,886 to 238,297, representing a percentage increase of 6.4% an indication that gradually permanent meetings are becoming progressively attractive to the men folk. Praise God. <laughs> A number of the areas carried out evangelism at riches, resulting in the winning of 30,669 souls for the Lord. That is through the Pentecost men's ministry. Now, committees and boards. The various committees and boards, such as the Literature Committee, National Media Ministry Committee, National Music Committee, National Estate Committee, Records, Statistics and Archives Committee, National Discipleship and Leadership Development Committee, Pentecost Press Board, Pen TV Board, Pentecost Convention Center Board, and the Pensions Board performed very well in their respective mandates. Their activities greatly enhanced the Vision 2023 agenda of the church. Now, the Church of Pentecost Higher Educational Institutions. In 2019, the integration of Pentecost University College, that is PUC, and Pentecost Theological Seminary was finalized. If all faculty, staff, students, administration, and finance of Pentecost Theological Seminary integrated into the, Pen the Pentecost University College system. This led to the creation of the School of Theology, Mission, and Leadership. The Church of Pentecost Chairman's Education Foundation was launched in Accra and Kumasi on 8 September and 1 December, respectively. The foundation has so far realized 1,500,000 Ghanaian cities. This foundation will not only provide scholarship opportunities for needy students, but also contribute massively to the infrastructure development of the university. To the glory of God, just last Thursday, 28 May 2020, Pentecost University College received its presidential charter at a short but beautiful ceremony at the Jubilee House. The institution, as of yesterday, 1st June, shall be known as Pentecost University. To Apostle Dr. Ochiwaka and his vice elder professor, Kwame Bosiaku Amani Enchi, we say thank you so much for the good work you did for us. God richly bless you. All past rectors, that is Apostle Professor Pokunina retired and Apostle Professor Peter Che retired. We say thank you very much for your great contribution. PUC Council members, both past and present, management, staff, and students, we say, are you cool? The church's three other external higher education institutions, namely Birmingham Christian College in the UK, the Pentecost Biblical Seminary in the USA, and the Pentecost Bible Institute in La Côte d'Ivoire made significant strides in 2019. To the glory of God, Birmingham Christian College obtained a validation to run Bachelor of Arts in Theology and Master of Arts in Applied Theology with Newman University in the UK. These programs will commence in September and November 2020, respectively. God be all the glory. Pentecost Biblical Seminary in the USA also received a non-profit approval from the state of New Jersey. The seminary submitted a licensure 
petition for institutional accreditation to state secretary of the higher education in the new in new jersey this will enable the institution to apply for programs accreditation from the association of biblical higher education and the association of theological schools in usa and canada the church of pentecost bible institution in la Côte d'Ivoire, since its restructuring in 2015 has also been offering training for ministers from Côte d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, Mali, Cameroon, and Senegal. The institution, with a consistent annual grant support of 25 million CFA from the headquarters, worked to improve its infrastructure base. We thank God for his grace of providing for us for us to be able to provide to support our institutions. To God be all the praise. Pastoral training and leadership development. The church continued to build the capacity of staff with departmental in-service training programs. Most of these training programs were fully or partially sponsored by the church. 11 ministers graduated with master's degree with 41 others continuing their master's studies. 16 ministers are also being sponsored for PhD programs. It is gratifying to note that in the year under review, the districts, areas, and ministries in Ghana, together with the headquarters, spent 4 million and 3,009 Ghanaian cities. 34 pesos to sponsor the educational pursuit of members of the church at various levels. To God be all the glory. Vision 2023 implementation highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to at this moment brief the house of some highlights from the implementation of the Vision 2023 agenda of the church. Teaching, teachings. Teaching on the dual purpose of the church were effectively carried out in all assemblies under the annual theme, I will build my church. Members of the church worldwide were equipped with the understanding that they have been called to belong to God and sent back into the world to serve God's purpose. These teachings contributed immensely to members' involvement in ministry outside the church building as reported in the various ministry interventions. Discipleship. Various discipleship interventions were pursued at all levels of the church in both Ghana and the external missions of the church. To the glory of God, Bible study class attendance improved due to the new arrangement to have it after worship. Reports from the areas in Ghana indicated that the average Sunday Bible study attendance stood at 65.6% of the adult church membership. Adult cell membership also increased by 16.1%, with an average cell meeting attendance of 1,109,082, representing 55.5% of the total membership. The modification of the Bible study groups into discipleship groups, coupled with national districts, local leadership retreats, read through the Bible a year program, enhanced ministry to backsliders, and the introduction of new members class, counseling ministry, and teaching of marriage and family life have greatly enriched the discipleship base of the, the local church worldwide this is still however there is still however more room for improvement the church and socioeconomic development i will start with health in 2019 1,890,727 ghanian cities 52 pesos was spent on health care Supported 
healthcare support to members at various levels of the church in Ghana. The Pentecost clinics at Takwa and Ayanfri were upgraded to a hospital status by the Health Facility Regulatory Agency. This implies that these two facilities have been licensed to provide high-level service of full-fledged hospitals. With this development, the church now runs three hospitals and five clinics. The church in 2019 also commenced its maiden community-based health planning service, that is Chip Compound Project, in partnership with the Ministry of Health in called Kutamsi, a rural community in the Pusiga district in the Boku area of the church. This project is about 90% completed. Integrated community-based water and sani sanitation and hygiene. To the glory of God, the church drilled a total of 29 boreholes in deprived communities in the Upper West, Savannah, Oti, Bono East and northern regions of Ghana. Seven of, of these boreholes have been mechanized and the other, others installed with hand pump. These boreholes are providing water for over 52,000 beneficiaries. It is worth noting that four of these boreholes were founded by a non-Church of Pentecost member, Mr. Nathaniel Adams Jr. Hallelujah. We thank God that he is bringing people from outside our walls to support our agenda. Prison holding facility projects in pursuance to the objective to contribute to the enhancement of the reformation and integration of prisoners in Ghana, the Church of Pentecost advanced its prison support initiative through the construction of correctional services at key strategic areas in Ghana in partnership with the Ghana Prison Service. As at December 2019, three of these projects located at Ejira, Nsaom, and Obwasi were at different stages of completion. The fourth project located at Damango commenced in January this year. I want to use this opportunity to once again express the Executive Council's appreciation to our church in the United States for fully funding the Jira Holding Facility. Thank you very much. It is also worth mentioning that two individuals are also funding the three other facilities. With one of them, a non-Church of Pentecost member, funding two of the facilities. May the Lord of the church bountifully bless them. Police station and police post project. The year witnessed the completion of one dis district police headquarters for the Ghana police service at Ekropon Ekrapim in the eastern region of Ghana. The project was commissioned and handed over to the Ghana police service on 16 January 2020, this books with the participation of all stakeholders in the districts, heads of local churches, council, heads of local council of churches, and the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, imams, traditional rulers, the district chief executive, heads of institutions, GPRTU, chief of the Zongo communities, assemblymen, and unit committee members working together got themselves involved in a well-coordinated cleanup exercise on the second Sunday of every month. The second Saturday of every month, as you say, from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. School children within the district also participated in these monthly exercises under the directive of the district director of education a task force made up of the Ghana Police Service and Fire Service was put in place to ensure compliance during cleanups. The campaign has contributed immensely 
to environmental cleanliness in, all, in the various communities in the district. Hallelujah. All over the world, the Lord will be our strength. We are possessing the nations all over the world. Right the Lord will be our strength. All over the world, the Lord will be we are a chosen generation. We are the chosen generation, empowered by the Lord to go and preach the word. We are the chosen generation, empowered by the Lord to go and preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. in the nations we are looking at community level development in addition to what the church pursued at the headquarters level the various assemblies districts areas and nations also undertook a number of community initiative initiated development intervention such as graveling of roads drilling of boreholes construction of food bricks painting of public buildings construction of rest stops or bus stops in many places. In Rwanda, for example, three districts, Marimba, Kinyaga, Yinji, and, <laughs> they shouldn't worry, <laughs> and Garama, built two bedroom apartments, each for two homeless families. Great, that is wonderful. In the United Kingdom, the various districts carried out community livelihood programs, such as organizing food bank outreach projects, donated to existing clothes bank projects, and feeding of the homeless. The above mentioned social interventions at the various levels of the church have not only enhanced our relationship with governments and local authorities, but have also provided significant inroads for the church in the preaching of the gospel to politicians, chiefs, and opinion leaders in our towns and cities. Home and Urban Missions. The Home and Urban Missions was inaugurated on July 4, 2019. Within the period under review, 3,781 souls were won, including 159 Fulanis, 42 Congolese, 912 Northness in the South, 290 African migrant, migrants, 31 expatriates, 1,032 drug addicts, and 119 prostitutes were won for Christ. Just from July 4th, to December 31st, 2019. That is great. We thank God for that. Of this number, 1,539 converts were baptized in water and 718 received the Holy Spirit baptism. For, for the first time, three ghetto Christmas conventions were held and these were organized in Tema. Agomenya and Teshinungwa areas. Home and urban missions also received some significant attention from some of the external missions, mission areas. For instance, in Kenya, 
They inaugurated a home mission church for Sudanese herdsmen, settlers in Samburu. Samburu. In the United States, ministry to homeless and nursing homes gained substantial grounds in the various districts. In Calgary District, Canada, the Saturday preceding the Gospel Sunday was used to provide volunteering service in a community shelter for the homeless. We thank God for these interventions. Ministry to persons with disabilities. The ministry to persons with disabilities was in the ministry to persons with disability was inaugurated on July 4th, 2019. The ministry committee was formed in most of the areas and districts in Ghana. A total of 138 souls were won for Christ in the year through this ministry. Three new deaf ministry assemblies were established at Asqua, Tema, and Yeji. Currently, there are 10 deaf ministry assemblies in Ghana and one in Lome, Togo. The total membership of our deaf ministries as of December 2019 stood at 500. Chaplaincy ministry. The areas in Ghana initiated and regularized chaplaincy ministry to some educational and corporate institutions, artisans, health facilities, drivers, and key fit sporting clubs. In the external missions, especially in the Western nations, chaplaincy ministry to the nursing homes, prisons, and schools were also given significant attention. Chaplaincy ministry to the chieftain's institution received major attention. Some success stories have been outlined in the main address. I bring you at your attention to just a few of them. Through the, through the ministry, a number of chiefs were won for Christ. In Wenchi, Bwadan district in Techiman area, and Odikro, translated as community sub-chief, name with held, accepted Christ and was baptized. In Kaneshi area, the chief of official town gave his life to Christ and was baptized and currently fellowship with Mount Zion Worship Center. To God be the glory. Some chieftaincy disputes were also settled amicably. At Dadiaso district in Brekum area, the district minister and the chairman of the area chieftaincy committee helped to resolve a 20-year-old community dispute among the chiefs in the districts. In Teshinungwa area, through the leadership of the area head, three of the ministers in the area together with some selected ministers from other denominations within the area successfully mediated in a long-standing chieftaincy dispute between the paramount chief of the traditional council and the traditional priests. We thank God for all this. See, sometimes the problems can just be solved by the church, and we thank God for that. Counseling ministry. The counseling ministry was restructured to have its operation decentralized and accessible to all levels of the church. Strategic program outlines were developed by the counseling unit at the headquarters to facilitate the formal training and certification of counselors at all levels of the church in Ghana. The training is earmarked for 2020. PENSA International. PENSA International embarked on missions trip to Togo, Nigeria, and the Philippines. A total of 502 souls were won through these mission trips. To the glory of God, PENSA was also established in Arellano University in the Philippines, University du, du Lome in Togo, and the University of Elorin in Nigeria. One church was also planted in Tombia, Tombia Island in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. It is gratifying to note that the church in the UK, as of 2019, 
had 34 officially recognized Spencer across UK university campuses. That is, that is just too much. 34, we give God a praise. This has made Pensa one of UK's well-known and recognized campus ministries. Pentecost Workers Guild. The Pentecost Workers Guild was inaugurated in June 2019 as a platform to mobilize workers of the church to transform their spheres of influence with Christ-like character and service. As of December 2019, 13 girls were in operation to the glory of God. Finance and infrastructure development. In the wake of the banking crisis, which befell the nation in 2019, that is Ghana, Ghana still experienced a favorable economic outlook with moderate growth and tempering inflation. Inflation rate of 7.9% was recorded as against 2018 inflation rate of 9.4%. The church also performed well regardless of the adverse effect of the banking crisis. The church's commitment towards infrastructure development received a great boost with the release of grants to the CBCB projects, UACB projects, and also through the AIDF to the areas. CBCB and USCB grants of 39 million plus were disbursed to the areas for development projects. A total of 57 million comprising of headquarters grant, AIDF, and FIAS were released for the infrastructure projects. We thank God for his provision to us. However, despite of the efforts being made in the area of providing decent places of worship through the CBCB and USCB projects grants, the 2019 infrastructure analysis revealed that 2,737 out of the 16,946 assemblies in Ghana still worship on the trees and in classrooms. Much as we do not discourage the opening of new assemblies, ministers should factor into their annual budget how to finance building projects so as to reduce this number of assemblies under trees and classrooms. We thank God for the manifestation of his continuous presence in his church through diverse signs and wonders. In 2019, the church recorded many miracles by the power of the Holy Ghost. All the areas on some ministries reported spectacular events, which led one to acknowledge that the God of our fathers is still at work in the midst of his people. Evil powers were neutralized. Blind eyes were opened. The epileptic were healed. The death were raised to life. And couples were blessed with children after many years of marriage, among many other miracles. God is still alive in his church. Special recognition to the glory of God. Some of our members keep exhibiting excellence and hard work in the discharge of their duties. In the year under review, some received awards. Few of such people who receive awards and appointments are acknowledged here. Honorable Dickness Mrs. Elizabeth Saki, Deputy Greater Accra Regional Minister, received the Distinguished Service Award presented by the Ghana Parliamentary Christian Fellowship in recognition of her exceptional leadership and devoted service to God and Christian service. We thank God for that, for the the fellows to recognize that she is so devoted to God, that is a plus. She never hid her light. Elder Noebert Bayin of PRWC Borga in the Borga area was awarded the most outstanding contrib contribution and resilience in the delivery of quality education in Ghana amidst poor social amenities. At the sixth 
Otunfo Osei to the second teacher's award. Elder Justice Cheba for of Hachu area, formerly a justice of the High Court, was elevated to the Appeals Court of Ghana by the President. Dickness Mrs. Angelina Piazza was appointed a member of the nominating committee of the International Federation of Accountants. She is with the PRWC Atomic Kwabenya in the Hacho area. Brother Solomon Dan Sudankwa of the New Fadama District, Kaneshi area, emerged the overall best graduating student, best student of the Faculty of Engineering, and best male graduating student for, from the Church of Pentecost University during the 2019 graduation ceremony. Brother Solomon Asihini of La Area and a level 300 student of the University of Ghana, Legon, was adjudged the youngest chartered accountant for the year 2019 by the Institute of Chartered Accountants. He was just 19 years. 19 years. <laughs> you wonder how you, can, you could combine the two and still be the best. We thank God for grace. Mrs. Francisca Nyamiche Kakari, Chief Executive Officer of Liberty Insurance Brokers Company Limited, was a gigantic most respected Chief Executive of the year. She is with the La Area. God be all the glory. Apostle Daniel, Daniel Ochi Walker. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't know whether I should say Rector of PUC. <laughs> Vice, Vice Chancellor of the Pentecost University was a judge, the most outstanding chief executive officer, private universities, category by the United Merchant Bank Ghana Tertiary Awards. He was also a judge, the most respected and best chief executive of a private university by the Ghana Industry CEO. We thank God for his life. Sister Martha Edubia of PIWC New Tafu won the Mandela Washington Fellowship Youth Africa Leaders Initiative in 2019. Ruth Mami Dufie Kakari received the Vodafone Ghana Prize for the best graduating female student in computer engineering and Erison Prize for the best graduating female student in computer engineering from the University of Ghana, Legon. She is with the PRWC Kokomlimli in the La area. Elder Nana Kojo Jesse of Swami area was a judge, the national best contributor of CIMAF cement, distributor of CIMAF cement, I should say. Dickness Christian Magnussen of Prisons Cortes Assembly, to whom area was a judge the best in academics and the overall best cadet officer from the Ghana Immigration Service School at Asimfosu in 2019. Pastor Ernest Pebi Asari of Asan Asankai District, Tak Takrade area had his Ghanaian language Ekrapim Tree reading book titled Demente, translated as What's the Matter, received the Kate Avan Ghanaian Language Special Award at his best Ghanaian language book, second runner up. This was presented to him by the Ghana Association of Writers. Thank you very much, Osofo. You have done well. Pastor Kwame Agbeshi of Bone District, Walwali area, won the Professor John Owusu Jampon Prize of being the overall best student in the public health at the University of Ghana Legon graduation. Elder Stephen Asanti Yamwa of PIWC Takwa was honored for upholding the virtues of honesty, integrity, accountability, 
in both private and public life by the prestigious Nobel International Award of West Africa while acting as the managing director for Anglo Gold Ashati in Edu Eduaprim Mine. Eduaprim Mines. We thank you. Brother, you have done very well. If you win an award <laughs> for integrity, then you are, you, are, you are very good. God bless you. Dickness Cecilia Ampedu of Community 4 District, Tema Area, won a global award for manufacturing a birthing chair, which helps to reduce maternal and neonatal morbidity and mortality. This led her to winning the Clinical Engineering Division Health Technology Challenge Award during the International Clinical Engineering and Health Technology Congress in Rome in 2019. Harriet Otujan of Teshinungwa area was adjunct the best student in Masters of Business Administration at the Accra Business School in 2019. Miss Sofa Lisa of Zoom Lion Ghana Limited and, P of, and also of PIWC Graceland, Teshi Nungwa area, was a judge the 2019 PR Professional of the Year and one of West Africa's top 20 marketing and communication professionals by the Instinct Waves. Eda Maswell Amepo of Sogakope area received Certificate of Excellence in recognition of his outstanding performance as tourism personality by the Ghana Tourism Authority. Home calls of ministers and wives and ministers' wives. The Lord called home some of the retired ministers as well as others who were in active service. These were Mrs. Mary Aino, Pastor Dr. Joseph Kwesi Amachi, Pastor Louis Opintine, retired. Now he's not retired, he's dead. So Mrs. Regina Apia Asamwa, Mrs. Grace Insia. Pastor Michael Enkibo Siako, Pastor Timothy Asare Ado, Pastor Andrew Stete, Mrs. Rejoice Mensa, Pastor Elijah Mahama, Mrs. Faustina Adri, Apostle Dr. Stephen Kofibedu, Apostle Maoko Damerda of Togo, Pastor DeGraft Kumsin. Let us continue to pray for the families of these departed saints. At this juncture, I would like to kindly ask that we stand if you can, or you bow down your head wherever you are, to observe a mini silent for in memory of these departed souls to the glory of God. In the sweet by and by mm -hmm. on that beautiful shore in the sweet by the Lord God Almighty bless the memory of these departed souls in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen now retirement of ministers after years of serving the Lord and his church some of our ministers will be retiring from active service this year 
I kindly mention their names as follows. Apostle Abraham Lincoln Ango, he served for 38 years. Apostle Matthew Labiwete, he served for 32 years. Apostle Nicholas Misa, he also served for 31 years. Apostle Michael Collins Esiedu, who was once my national head. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for contributing to my life. He served for 30 years. Apostle Julius Franklin Asantiae, he also served for 28 years. Prophet J. Amwa Dakwa, Nigeria, he also served for 25 years. Apostle Newton of Osuhi Nyako, he also served for 21 years. Apostle Kwame Chumasi, Kwame Chumasi Api Abona, in the UK, he also served for 17 years. Evangelist Samuel A.J. Esiama Mamobi served for 33 years. Evangelist Moses Agrate Kenny Ejusu also served for 31 years. Pastor Isaac Anani Babai, he served for 37 years. Pastor Ato uh, Amwakwa in cancer. He was my first district pastor. He's one of the good people that I've ever known on this planet Earth. Also, God bless you so much. He served for 34 years. Pastor Emmanuel Jan Mante, he served for 34 years. Pastor Jerry Paul Aja, he served for 34 years. Pastor Eric Kweji, served for 34 years. Pastor Samuel Kwame Esiedu, he served for 32 years. Pastor Samuel Badago, Emmanuel Badago, he served for 31 years. Pastor Samuel Kofi Ahinkai, Emmanuel Kofi Ahinkai, served for 31 years. Pastor Stephen Yeboa, served for 30 years. Pastor Stephen Miller, he served for 29 years. Pastor Frederick Imprim, served for 29 years. Pastor Charles Buama Asante, he served for 28 years. Pastor Ose Kwame Asamoa Amono Omono, served for 28 years. Pastor Stephen Eber, served for 27 years. Pastor Stephen Frimpon Corantin, served for 24 years. Pastor Bernard Yao Abebiu, served for 23 years. Pastor Joshua Kojo Asante, served for 23 years as well. Pastor James Akomia Banchi, served for 23 years. Pastor Philip Intim Mafo, also served for 22 years. Pastor Patrick Osei Apia Jemfi, served for 22 years as well. Pastor Andrews Kobina served for 21 years. Pastor J.H.K. Mensa, Nigeria, served for 23 years. Pastor Justice Bobiansa, Italy, served for 22 years. Pastor Antonio Roberto da Silva, Brazil, served for 15 years. Pastor Johnson Celestino, Dominican Republic, served for 15 years. Pastor David Brown in Tiamua, USA, served for 14 years. Pastor Joseph K. Pencil, by vocational, served for four years. Beloved, these gallant soldiers of the cross have meritoriously served the Lord and the church. This will be their last official participation in our council meeting as counselors. You know, we are having this meeting virtually. I would therefore kindly request that we honor and appreciate them with an applause wherever you may be. Shall we put our hands together? Okay, um, 
Shall we? You can do it better wherever you are. Just put your hands together. We thank you very much for serving God and serving the Church of Pentecost. We love you and we appreciate what you have done for us. May the Lord continue to be with you. God bless you. Please sit. Dear retiring ministers, I pray that the Lord God Almighty, before whom we, you have walked and said, bless and grant you a restful retirement when the time is due. God bless be with you. Now, brothers, you see that the Lord has given us cause to smile, a reason to praise him. But without sounding ungrateful, what we really want is not a great name for the Church of Pentecost, but that through the Church of Pentecost, the matchless name of the Lord will be accorded the needed praise in every sphere of society. That through the Church of Pentecost, the principles and the values of the kingdom of God will be brought back on our societies. That through the Church of Pentecost, the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdom of our God, thereby turning many to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That through the Church of Pentecost, the churches will be refocused to seek Christ and his righteousness so that nations will be exalted to the glory of his great name. May he do this for us and may he answer this prayer. Above all, our greatest desire is that there may be glory in the church of Pentecost from generation to generation. On this note, dearly beloved, it is my singular honor to declare this special 44th session of the general council meetings of the church of pentecost officially opened in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit amen <laughs>